All right, everybody. This is John at the Creature Teacher, and this next animal, right next to the bullfrog, and he is a close relative. His name is Grumpy because he has a pretty grumpy, grumpy demeanor, a grumpy face. Turn on my light here so you can see him. There he is in the corner. And this here is Grumpy, and Grumpy is a. Oh, there's my finger blocking the camera. Let's kind of adjust this. There we go. There's Grumpy right there. He is a marine toad, otherwise known as a cane toad. He's sitting in the corner being a grump. There he is. Now, like with all amphibians, it's important to wear gloves, not only for their protection, but for this one, uh, especially yours, because this is a toxic animal. All right, and they are highly toxic to humans. Now, it's not because he can bite or anything like that. He's not venomous. It's because of, if I bring him a little bit closer, here you go, buddy. Kind of doesn't like me too much, but that's all right. He's a toad. He's kind of puffed his body up to make himself look larger and more impressive. But right here, right kind of behind his eye, whoop, he didn't want me to touch it. It's all right. But right there, and then right there on either side of the head, basically behind the eyes or the ears, his tympanic membrane is kind of hard to see from up there. His tympanic membrane is right there, but right there. That, uh, that large, looks like a giant warty thing. That is called a paratoid gland, and that produces a powerful... Let's see if I can show it through the glass. Turn the light off. Here we go. That paratoid gland produces a powerful toxin. This gland right there. Now, that toxin's not always over their entire body, because, again, it does come out through that gland, and it comes out in, like, kind of a milky, milky secretion. It's kind of like a... looks like a melted cream cheese color or, or frosting color, honestly, is kind of what it looks like. And that, the lighting is quite terrible. Let me put the camera back. Oh, geez. Here we go. Let's come over the top. I know, you didn't like it. And that is uh, what makes them toxic. Now, it's always important just to wear gloves when touching them. Uh, you cannot absorb the toxin through your skin, but it is easily absorbed through your mucous membrane. So your mouth, your nose, your eyes, anything like that. Now, normally... Uh, Humans don't really get affected by this unless you were to uh, pick one up without knowing, mess around with it, get the toxin on your hands, and then you rub your eyes on accident uh, or dig your nose or something like that. Eat food without washing your hands. If you handle one and wash your hands immediately afterwards really well, um, you're fine. Again, it's not recommended. Wearing gloves is a much better idea, but it's a big problem. Uh, four of these animals have been introduced. They are native to Central and South America. You can even find them in Texas, in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, pretty much along the border of Mexico is where you can find them. And where they're native to, there are animals that can eat them. However, these have been introduced all over the world. They're also known as a cane toad because they were introduced uh, wherever they grew sugar cane. They needed an animal to eat the bugs that ate, ate cane. So they introduced this animal to places like Cuba and Australia and even uh, Hawaii, and uh, it caused pretty massive problems in the ecosystems. Um, in Australia, there are a lot of native animals that eat toads, snakes, lizards, etc. And uh, when they introduced these, those native animals uh, tried to eat these, and, it, well, they die. And not only are the adults, like this guy, toxic, but so are the tadpoles and the eggs. So it's very difficult for these animals to be killed by anything. And uh, also, um, they are tolerant of salt, which is kind of weird for an amphibian. I mean, you can't throw them in salt water, but they can tolerate higher concentrations of it than other amphibians can. So, hence the name marine toad. They, they were able to transport them across the ocean very easily for that reason. And they also, they're not picky about what they eat. They're one of the few uh, frog toad species that will eat a, a dead animal. Normally frogs and toads, are their, their, their eyes are very, uh, they lock on to movement. Um, and so if something is not moving, they kind of don't notice it. Whereas to these toads, uh, they'll eat stuff like cat food and dog food. It's very common for them to, you know, if you have dogs outside... They uh, figure out real quick where the dog food bowl is, and they'll just start eating your dog food. You sit around it, wait, they'll wait for you to pour food into the dog food bowl. Um, one big problem with domesticated pets where they've been introduced is uh, something called toad chewing. That's where the pet will grab onto the toad, chew on it, You know, especially dogs. You know, they play with rant, 
play with things. And uh, when they chew on it, that toxin gets in their mouth. And unfortunately, a lot of dogs do get killed by it because it is fatal. Um, you, you can save them if you get them to a vet in time. If you notice the dog starting to kind of foam at the mouth, vomit, act weird. Um, it, says on, it says more online on what the symptoms of toad chewing are. Again, that's not really a problem where these things haven't been introduced, but you know where they've been introduced, where they're not native, it's it's, it's an issue. Uh, as keeping them as a, keeping them as a pet, if you wanted to, they are pretty easy to care for. They're not picky about what they eat. They do love to eat lots of things. Again, this is not something you're going to handle a lot. You'll want to wear gloves. If you try to hold them for too long, they will pee on you, like most frogs and toads do. So just keep that in mind. And again, with their water, just like with any other frog, just like with uh, well, you can't see them because of the glass, but uh, good old job is right there. Um, you want to change it out every day. They do go to the bathroom a lot in their water. And with him, I feed him crickets and superworms. Just gave him a bunch more. He does not like to eat in front of me. He likes to eat at nighttime uh, when I'm not in here. So uh, if when I come in in the morning, that is empty. There's none of them in here. They don't get knocked out of the bowl like Jabba does. Jabba will knock them out of the bowl, and I have to find them in the dirt. Uh, grumpy, he will eat them all up, no problem. He has no issue with that. Anyway, so we'll say we'll say bye to Grumpy. You say bye. There you go. Say bye to say bye to him. Now I will say one thing: these are the largest toad species. They do get huge when he's fully grown. Uh, the largest one that I have seen was about starting from this back corner here to about to here was the biggest one I've seen. They do get mass. The females get really huge. The males, which he is a male, do not get that big. They're usually about half the size of a female. But the females get huge. They're very large. Uh, you can uh, put a harness on them and walk them because um, they get that big. I personally would not walk a toad, but you know some people might. But the females do get huge. So if you, for some reason, get one of these and you get a female... Uh, just going to let you know, you will have to have a big house for it because they do get big. Anyways, this has been Grumpy, and of course this has been John with the Creature Teacher. Uh, feel free to like the video, subscribe, share it with friends, and of course as always you can check out our Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter pages, and our webpage at thecreatureteacher.org. Anyways, you guys have a great day. See you around.